Today we start a new section, section 4.6, which is about the graph sketching. It's really, uh, this is not really a new information. We're just putting um, everything we've learned in the last couple of weeks together uh, uh, and when they're all bundled so as to obtain a better uh, draw better graphs or draw all the information we get from the first and second derivatives of a function to make sense of what the f looked like so again there's really nothing um, new from the material point of view it's just we're putting things together so as to apply it to the sketching of graphs so this is the name of the section so we know here that we have uh, information about the, the growth of f, depending on the sine of f prime, and also about the concavity of, um, uh, of the function based on the knowledge of the second derivative. Whenever there is a zero uh, of, of the first derivative, we have a critical point, and that may or may not correspond to local min or max. Um, when we have a zero or we're a, or a point where the second derivative is not defined, we may be in the presence of a, an inflection point. There are going to be points where you switch from being concave up to concave down or vice versa. And so we have to, in order to, to gather all the information, from the function, we're going to consider all these points where uh, something happens, so whether either the f prime or f double prime don't exist, uh, the points where uh, f prime or f double prime are equal to zero, and those are going to be our transition points. Uh, and this molar, so this is going to divide the whole real line into some uh, intervals in the unit of intervals where something happens, either the concavity changed or whether f. Uh, is increasing or not uh, changes from one interval to the next so we see that, that we have some sort of steps so the first thing is um, so let's actually put this into some organized steps so the thing is step zero is uh, I, I like to put a uh, yeah uh, some step in between some step uh, one half um, the step zero is to determine determine uh, the domain of f. So where is f defined, where is not defined, etc. Uh, this is in parentheses step one half. In case it is available or it's easy to compute, determine determine the zeros of f step two no i mean step one i'm sorry Let me skip a step one we need to determine determine the signs of f prime and f double prime step two we need to note the transition points which is something i described uh, uh, maybe a minute ago the transition points and sign combinations by this I mean the signs of uh, f prime and f double prime. So, for instance, if f prime is increasing, I mean if prime is positive, and f double prime is negative, it means that the function is increasing, but uh, it is concave down. So, f prime positive, for example, f prime positive, f double prime negative implies the graph of f will look something like this so it's increasing so from point a to b it, go, it goes up 
but it does so in a concave down way, okay? something like that. Okay, so it's important to note note uh, the uh, transition points. Third step is to determine 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 the the asymptotic behavior behavior of f and step four draw arcs of appropriate shape and asymptotic behavior. What I mean by the appropriate shape, we need to um, record uh, the the way the function actually looks. So remember that f double prime tells you how f bends, and f prime tells you how f uh, whether f increases or not is increasing or not. So something like this. So if you have two transition points, oh, this is one transition point and this is another one then you need to uh, draw the corresponding arc based on the, these two pieces of information. Uh, so the rest is just uh, fairly simple. I think it's uh, better explained with an example. Uh, I'm not very good at drawing, so I, if you're patient, uh, I hope you are. So suppose we have the we're asked to draw the graph of 4 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth divided by 6. Okay, so what is the step 0? Step 0 is to find the domain of f. What is the domain of f? I know that if we're in a lecture room, you will tell me that it's all of r, all the real numbers, because this is a polynomial. Okay, so this is a fine everywhere. <clears throat> um, this being a quartic, uh, we can actually find the, the zeros using, you know, okay, so this is a quartic, but it doesn't contain uh, cubic or linear terms, so, so no, no x, x or x cubed terms. So in principle, we could solve for x squared and then get two more. Uh, I mean, two more pairs of roots by solving x squared is equal to these two possibilities that we're going to obtain. But uh, this is not something that you'll be asked to do really on an exam. So I'm I'm just going to skip that for this particular example. Uh, and just for those of you who may be curious, I mean, this is a quadratic equation to set f of x equal to zero. You just write it like x squared squared over 6 minus 2 times x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. So x squared is equal to y. Right, so y, so you get y squared over 6 minus 2 y squared no, minus 2y plus 4 is equal to 0. So you can solve for y. And once you solve for y, um, suppose y is equal to one of two possibilities, a or b, then you solve for x squared now. So x, x, x will be equal to plus or minus y from a and plus or minus b. And that's all I meant by this. So we're going to uh, skip the step one half, and you're not going to be asked to do that. Just, just trust me on that, on that one. So now we move on to determining this uh, determining the signs of f and f uh, no, of f prime and f double prime that we need to take the derivative so this 
f prime is minus 4x plus 4x cubed over 6, which is equal to 2x times x squared over 3 minus 2. So f prime is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. This is the first possibility um, coming from this factor here. Or when x squared over 3 minus 2 is equal to 0, which uh, leads to x squared minus 6 being equal to 0, or x being equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. Um, okay, so those are going to be the transition points coming from, from f prime. So when this is the change in the sign of f prime. Uh, minus square root 6, uh, 0 and plus square root 6. Okay, so transition points so far are going to be, so we're going to record this uh, point somewhere uh, later on. Uh, then f, f double prime, uh, this is equal to minus 4 plus 2 thirds times 3x squared. We can simplify the 3s and we get 2x squared minus 4. So f double prime will be equal to 0 if, well, 2x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, or if x is equal to either plus or minus square root 2. Again, why are we not looking for critical points or possible candidates for inflection points where f double prime or f prime are not defined? Because I know you again, if you were in the classroom, you will tell me that because this is a polynomial, uh, it has, uh, it's uh, differentiable everywhere. And the second derivative is also, uh, and the first derivative is also differentiable everywhere. Okay, so these are the only kinds of uh, points that we'll uh, encounter. So we have, we have a number of points here. So what are the transition points? Uh, so the step two, the second step, the second step is to find the transition points, remember, uh, the transition points and sign combinations of uh, f prime and f double prime. So we need to divide the real line then into a sequence of uh, points. Okay, so um, is it this step this is to find the transition points uh, and and sign combinations sign combinations so what are the intervals here so we had uh, the zero plus or minus the square root of six plus or minus square root two for the our potential transition points so what what are uh, these points so we have uh, Interval minus infinity comma comma square root of minus six. This is the small. I mean the the yeah the smallest of these uh, uh, transition points is minus square root six. Then uh, we have something happening. I mean nothing happening until we reach minus square root two. So the second interval will be minus square root six comma minus square root 2. Then nothing changes until you hit another critical point. So the minus square root 2 corresponds to a possible uh, inflection point when we're the second derivative is 0. But the, neither the second or first derivative becomes 0 until 0, which is a critical point. And then uh, we find ourselves with another transition point at square root 2 and then from square root 2 to square root of 6 this is our biggest uh, critical point square root 6 was a critical point and finally from square root 6 and higher values we don't have any other transition points so these are all our transition points so we're going to make a table your f prime uh, is uh, of what sign? 
between minus infinity and minus square root 6 is negative plus uh, is positive is positive here again it is negative it is negative in here and it's uh, positive in here uh, how do we know that remember that we can plug in any value in in set interval here's anything uh, between minus infinity and minus square root 6 to get the, the value of f prime so f prime is given by 2x times x squared over 3 minus uh, 6 um, okay so if we plug in say um, minus uh, I mean minus 9 you're gonna get minus 18 here uh, and you're going to get uh, 81 over 3, which is 27, uh, minus, minus 2, which is going to be positive, so times something negative, which is minus 18, is going to be negative. So we can do that for every interval here, and we get the sign of f prime, 3d minus square root 6 and minus square root 2, we get a positive sign a positive sign again for meeting minus square root to zero minus minus and plus finally so for f double prime uh we do the same thing we just plug in some value in between minus infinity and minus square root six and we get plus we get plus we get a minus uh minus and then a plus and a plus sign so then what are the sign combinations here? So the sign um, combination or minus plus, minus for the first derivative, uh, plus for the second derivative, here is plus plus, here is plus minus. Just look at the two things above, so minus minus, minus plus, and finally plus plus and so what is uh, f what does that tell us about f f is uh, in this interval is decreasing because the derivative is negative and the function is uh, concave up because the second derivative is positive here is increasing and uh, it is concave up increasing and concave down decreasing and concave down decreasing and concave up and increasing and concave up now we can also um, find uh, local min and local max and inflection points um, so for uh, what happens here at minus square root of 6 the using the first derivative test we have that the function was decreasing and then started increasing after minus uh, square root 6 uh, function was uh, yeah well, function was de decreasing so that means it is a local min so f of minus square root 6 and the same thing happens here at minus uh, square root 6. Square root 6, at this point, if we look down here, uh, the function is decreasing for values smaller than square root 6. I mean, very close, but smaller than square root 6. And then it becomes on the, the, the increasing again. The function becomes increasing. So f of minus square root 6 and f of square root of 6 are both local min uh, f of zero on the other hand is a point where the function is increasing for uh, negative values of x close to zero and it's uh, decreasing for uh, slightly positive values of x so f of zero is a local max and we have inflection points where here we notice that the function is concave up and goes uh, and changes from concave up to concave down and here it changes from concave down to concave up 
and here well there's no change and there's no change over here either so there are only two inflection points and they'll co correspond to the zeros of f double prime so minus square root 2 and square root 2 so these are inflection points because we change concavity so inflection points are um, minus and plus square root 2 also minus square root 2 so what about the asymptotic behavior of, of now that we've concluded the step two what about what can we say about the asymptotic behavior of f okay so what what can we say about the limit about the limit the limit of f of x when x goes to plus or minus infinity we can do both at the same time uh, because this is the limit x goes to plus or minus infinity of a quartic so no matter whether you're on the positive side of the real numbers or the negative side, x, x to the fourth uh, power is always positive and is becoming unbounded. And if there's something we'll learn at the beginning of this course is that x to the fourth beats x squared and certainly four, which is just a constant. But in any way, four is positive. So this whole thing is going to plus infinity. Uh, at either side of the real line uh, and also this implies there are no horizontal asymptotes uh, and to find so my, in order to find find vertical vertical asymptote we must uh, compute limit of f of x at points where f is um, uh, it has an indefinite form or where I mean, where is it? Uh, point uh, C, where where F is um, defined. So, and there are none in this case, right? Because um, this is a polynomial, so it's always defined in this case. Finally, step four is the actual sketching. So let us look at all the points here and all well, the interesting points are minus square root of six square root of 2 and my minus square root of 2 square root of I mean 0 is already here so it's uh, highlighted already by the y-axis square root of 2 square root of 6 oh okay and um, so here we notice that this is a quartic and okay so we have the behavior so what what have, what is the value I mean this function is symmetric with respect to the to the y-axis why well, this function is uh, even so uh, it, in hindsight I mean it was natural that we would have a uh, since it's uh, differentiable would have a critical point at zero 
So if you compute, I mean, the well, uh, f at zero is equal to four. F at zero is equal to four, right? F of zero, so this is f of f. I is four minus two times zero squared plus zero over zero to the fourth over six. Uh, so in between minus square root two and square root two, the function is concave down. Right. So uh, we have something like this. Okay, down. And let me just do that again. Oh, sorry. So it's going to keep down. Um, but then we have inflection points. So the concavity here changes. And there's a zero somewhere over here. Then we have two local min. And minus square root six and square root of six. And remember that that after square root of two, the function is going to keep up. Uh, and the function from here on it goes to I mean goes to infinity. So at some point it must become positive and it goes upwards like that. Same thing happens on the other side because the function is symmetric. So it looks something like that. So um, we've used all the information we had. So the function was concave down between minus square root of two. And square root of two. Having inflection points uh, there. I mean, this is not, this doesn't look very symmetric. So let me put it like that, maybe. Hope you get the idea. But so, okay, so this is a set of two inflection points, and then the function becomes uh, concave up, and it reaches a minimum at square root six, uh, and at minus square root six, uh, it's concave up from uh, square root two up to infinity, and it goes to infinity. At infinity, so it must take on this shape. And at square root six, at square root six, uh, how do we know that uh, these values here at square root of uh, f f of square root of six or minus square root of six is negative? Uh, because we simply plug it in. So f of square root six is four minus two times the square root of six squared plus the square root of 6 to the 4 divided by 6. This is 4 minus 2, the square root of 6 squared is 6. 6 squared over 6. Minus this is 6, that's where square root of 6 to the 2, to the 2. And what do we get? 4 minus 2 times 6 plus 6, so 4 minus 6, which is minus 2. So this is equal to minus 2. And for the same reason, we know it's positive of square root 2. F of square root of 2 is 4 minus 2 times the square root of 2 squared plus the square root of 2 to the 4 over 6 and this is equal to 4 minus 4 plus um, 2 2 squared which is 4 
over 6 and which gives us 2 thirds so it's positive so whatever root we have happens in between square root, uh, square root 2 and square root 6 and on the other side it's just symmetric with respect to the y-axis between minus uh, square root 6 and minus square root 2 okay so this is the shape of uh, the function f based on the sign I mean, the knowledge of the uh, based on knowledge of the transition points and the sign combinations between transition points of both the derivative and the second derivative okay, we continue then in the in the next video uh, uh, okay with uh, uh, more I mean perhaps a more elementary example here again uh, how to compute the signs I mean just want to stress that I mean I didn't want to overwhelm you with all the information here and this is something we already know so I didn't want to insist on that how to find the signs of f prime inside these intervals or f double prime you just pick any point and compute the sign so it would have, would have taken us forever and I know that you can do that so I just wanted to uh, save you the, the time I computed that uh, in fact we ended up doing it uh, well, I mean, you can do it exactly as we've uh, done for f just plug in some values and that's it okay but i just wanted to spare you the time okay so we'll, we'll continue in the next video uh, with the graph sketching and then we're going to move on to applied optimization which is a very important uh, part of the course and probably the, we've been building up since we defined the derivative uh, so uh, let's uh, try to move fast on this topic and, and move on to the important stuff or the most important stuff I should say